Hello, my name is Shahyar Shahyari, and this is a short video on calculating compound interest. So um, let's say you have $1,000 and you put it in an account and you have a 7% annual interest rate compounded monthly. And you wanna know after 120 months, what will be the total amount? First, let's think about that 7% annual interest. That 7% annual interest is the interest for, for a year. And what that means that per month, you get seven, because every month is being compounded. Compounded monthly means every month, they see how much money you have in the account and they will give you interest based on that. But they won't give you 7% of that because the 7% is for the year. So what they do is that say, well, for one month, what's the interest? Well, it's seven divided by 12. And that's 0.083% interest per month. But percent um, is not the, what we want. What we want that is in fraction. And so we divide, 0.583 divided by 100, and we get 0.00583. That's the interest you get um, um, uh, per month for the, the based on how much money you have. So what does that mean? That means that if you have one dollar in the bank for one month, you get 0.00583 dollars in interest. It's not um, it's not that much. It's not even a cent. It's ha it's a little bit more than half a cent. That's how much you get. But if you had two dollars, well, you would get twice that much. If you had three dollars, you would get three that much. If you had three to three times that much. If you had Apple dollars, you would get Apple times that. The point is that if you have Apple dollars in, in the bank for a month, then you get Apple times 0 0.00583 dollars in interest. Now that's the interest, but you also have your original amount there. So how much after one month, what will be your principal plus interest? It will be Apple, the original, plus the interest, which is 0 0.00583 times Apple. If you factor the Apple, you get Apple times one plus 0 0.00583 dollars in total. So if you start with dollar, well, Apple dollars, after one month, you have Apple times one plus 0 0.00583. Now keep that in, in your head. Well, I'll remind you, again, the question is that we have $1,000 in an account, 7% annual interest rate, compounded monthly. What's the total after 120 months? And what we have decided is that if you have uh, uh, Apple dollars, after one month, it becomes Apple times one plus 0 0.00583. Now you're starting with $1,000. So after a month, you will have $1,000 times 1.00583. Now, what about after the second month? Where the second month, you just spent a month, but you started not with 1,000, but with this new amount. So this new amount gets multiplied by one plus 0 0.00583. So after two months, you have your original, what you had at the beginning uh, beginning of the second month, which was a thousand times one plus 0 0.00583. You multiply that by another 1.00583 and you get a thousand times 1.00583 squared. If you need practice with exponent, watch my videos on exponents. And, and then what happens after three months? Well, you have to multiply what you had at the end of sec two months again by another one plus 0 0.00583. So you get a thousand times one, point, uh, one plus 0 0.00583 cubed dollars. And this continues. And after 120 months, you will have a thousand times one plus 0 0.00583 to 120th, which is about $2,008.86. Now we can generalize this. If R is the interest rate per compounding period in decimals, so usually banks, other places give you the interest rate as annual interest rate. But depending on how they compound it, you have to figure out what the interest rate is per compounding period and not as a percentage, but as a decimal. And N is the number of those periods. I mean, you might be, be thinking in terms of years or months or days or whatever, but you have to do it in terms of the periods. How many compounding periods are there? And if you start with P, uh, as your principal, as what you started out with, then the value of um, uh, your, your money, your investment after N periods will be P times one plus R to the N. And again, the argument, the reasoning was what we gave. You start with P, after one month, you have P times one plus R. After two, two periods, not months, periods, you have P times one plus R squared and so on. And so after N periods, you have P times one plus R to the N. One final example, what if I have a, th a 3,000 loan maybe on my credit card and I don't pay anything? Um, it's a 20% annual interest rate compounded quarterly. How much will I be owing? 
after two and a half years. So here P is 3000. Um, um, the interest rate per compounding period, well, it's 20 um, divided by four because 20% divided by four, but that's gonna be in percentage. I have to write it in decimals. So I also have to multiply it by one over 100 divided by one over 100 and you get 0 0.05. So every quarter, quarter is um, a quarter of the year. So you, the, the interest rate is going to be 0 0.05. And uh, how many periods are there? There are two and a half uh, years. Each year has 12 months. So two and a half times 12, that's how many, um, how many months there are. But in a, in, in a quarter, there are three months. So you have to divide by three and you get 10. So there's 10 quarters in two and a half years. And so what will be would the future value of this, this loan be? Well, three times the 3000 P times one plus R one plus 0.05 raised to the power 10. And that will be 4, 000, about $4,886.68. So about $1,800, more than 50% of the loan will be added to it. This is the end of this lecture. The, here's a picture of Claremont, California. If you like, watch my other videos, including my longer videos on elementary mathematics.